Hi everyone and welcome back to the Warthog Project. Today's video is going to be about MFDs, namely how I swapped out these Thrustmaster Warthog ones for a set of custom made A10 specific ones. Okay, so here we are with the parts of the MFD that I've drawn up in Coral Draw. Um, this is sort of what the completed product looks like. Uh, all the white's engraved. Uh, these little things here, I'll show you how I do them later. They're little raised sections on the rear one. So I'm basically just going to cut them out of acrylic and glue them on before I paint and engrave it. Uh, these are the buttons. Now these buttons are the same dimensions and size for every other button that's a push button in the cockpit. So you can basically take one of these buttons out and throw it straight in the CDU and it'll fit perfectly. Uh, here we have the top cover. That one's cut out of 2mm white acrylic and then painted black and then engraved so you get the white coming through. Um, this little thing here is just a cover for the nut of the um, rotary switch that'll be in there. Uh, here's a middle plate, that one's out of 3mm black acrylic. Um, you can see that that button there is larger so if I click this and put it in the center you'll see there's a lip uh, so it retains the button. I'll show you in a second what it looks like. Here is the third panel, this one holds the LEDs. So these, this one here and this one here are glued together. And then this one here is the one that holds the buttons in to that panel and it is screwed on the back through those holes. Those holes actually have standoffs, which will, the, the PCBs for the buttons will attach to. Uh, so that section there is the same for both sides. And then here's where it differs. You can see obviously that one's got a, that one's for the left MFD, so there's a mounting bolt on that side. That one's for the right MFD, so there's a mounting bolt on that side. And the dimensions are slightly offset to match my front panel um, in order to fit the screen on the large LCD panel. Okay, so here is the MFDs basically cut. This is the front piece. It's um, white, two millimeters thick. Um, there's the one that goes behind it. So these two here will be glued together like this and then painted black and then engraved. Um, these two bits here will also be glued together. That's the piece that retains the buttons from the back of that one. And then that's the mounting part that goes onto the MFD itself, onto the cockpit, sorry. And then these two parts, once they're glued together, will be bolted together using standoffs that go into the back of that. So the whole thing will be stuck together with some motherboard standoffs in there, which the PCBs will then sit on. All right, so I just wanted to show you how I make the buttons for the MFDs. Um, they're basically two squares, as you can see. This one is three millimeter thick acrylic, and this one is two millimeter th thick acrylic uh, cut on the laser. You can see that I basically glue them like that. Here's one that's already glued. And here's one that has been painted and engraved. Because I keep the protective paper on the back there when I paint it, when I paint it, sorry, that will be clear white. And then obviously when you put an LED behind it, it will backlight the arrow, but the paint will block out everything else. Look, it's not perfect doing it that way, but it comes out pretty good and it's good enough for my if if you used a tactile switch with an LED in the center of it, it would be much better because you'd have the LED right in the center. I, however, basically here's a prototype i do this and then i put a normal led underneath it to save down on costs so my button will be sitting like that in the panel and when you push it it'll hit that tactile switch because the led is a little bit further down you won't get perfectly even back lighting but the difference is these cost about a cent each and the leds cost a cent each whereas the decent tactile switches with leds in the center go for about ten dollars each in australia so I'm saving a lot of coin. 
And then these ones here are for the rocker switches. So you can see that the same sort of thing, except there's that little rocker and that holds it in the panel and then the, the rocker can tilt like that. Exact same setup for me. I just use, I have it basically in the center. So when you push down, it hits one. And when you push down, it hits the other. Rocks back and forward. Okay, so this is the com almost completed MFD. Um, most of the construction of it's finished. Um, and if I turn it around, you can see how the whole thing's held together. So you can see that there's these two are glued together and these two are glued together. Uh, these ones have been painted black and engraved. You can also see how I um, glued on those little rectangles that I forgot to show you. But I glued them on before I painted it black. So you get that you get the proper little bumps like the real one has. Uh, you can also see how all the buttons have been engraved and how they're actually retained in the thing and they won't fall out. They're loose at the moment. That's because there's no um, tactile switches touching the back of them. But once the tactile switches touch the back of them, they actually stick out just slightly, enough that you can feel it and push it in. You can also see how the rotary switch in there, three position, is um, held in. There's another cover that goes over the, the top so you can't see the nut. And then I'll 3D print a... Um, a button sorry a knob for it you can also see how these two glued together sections are held together actually using these motherboard standoffs so these motherboard standoffs go behind it and screw into the front piece which holds the whole thing as one unit and it also serves the purpose of being able to attach the pcbs to so you can see how i've i've laser engraved the pcbs and i've also just put a little mark where i need to drill the holes and then they will be screwed on with motherboard screws onto that which in turn holds the switches and the leds and you can also see how the back of the buttons are not painted so the leds will get through the leds will shine through and backlight is a, just a torch you can see how they backlight quite well obviously this is a super bright torch um look the other benefit of having the lip around it is that you get you don't get light bleeding on these buttons however you do get light bleeding on the rotary on the um toggle ones only because I can't have a lip because if there was a lip on it, it wouldn't it wouldn't move like that. Um, so that's one of the negatives of those switches. I was for a while contemplating maybe just having instead of this having two separate buttons plus and minus, but I think the overall look, um, the more more realistic look looks a bit better. So the PCBs that I'm using are just these prototype ones. You get them real cheap from China. Um, I was intending very early on to. Just design my own PCBs and so I'd be able to cut down on the wiring and have them made which is pretty cheap nowadays but I didn't do it because I tried playing around with um, designers to design my own PCBs and all that sort of stuff but it's a massive learning curve and I just don't have the time I've already learned laser cutting 3d printing Arduino I've learned everything for this project and I'm just not gonna learn PCB design I don't have time um, so I'm using these ones you can see that I'm, I'm using these because they are they have these lines in them and all these are connected. So when I, this is one I've cut earlier, but because it's it's got those long contacts, you just break break the um break the metal where you don't want a circuit to be complete. But it means I can share an earth across the whole thing. So when the switches are soldered to it, I don't have to worry about wiring up each switch to each other. And it also means I can have one solid power going through it, one solid negative going through it for the backlighting. So um, once it, they all go together in this, there'll only be one cable for earth connecting that one, connecting that one, and then the same thing, so it's a big loop. Um, works really well, and it means that I've only got one cable coming from this MFD to the cockpit for the whole backlighting circuit. Alright, so what I'm doing now is just cutting the PCBs. Um, I just wanted to show you the way I do that, so I'm obviously using the laser cutter. I, I was originally doing it by hand, but it was never never a good result um so what i've done is i've just lightly engraved these bits of masking tape on the bed of the laser and i've you can see i've put those holes in it those holes are so i can line up this when i put it down so i basically put them down line up the holes so i know it's in the right spot and then just run the outside cut um a bit more powerful to cut through the pcb itself and then i end up with the um the right size i also just mark these little holes here really really lightly on the outside of this and it just gives me somewhere to put my drill press um, so I know that the holes on this the screw holes will align perfectly with the um, motherboard standoffs in the MFDs so I'll run that now
So excuse the noise in the background, that's just the 3D printer. I'll show you what that's doing in a second. Um, this is the basic construction complete. You can see I just added two more. There's a rear cover on it like that. And there's another little spacer panel in there. And you can see that I've soldered up all the PCBs. Uh, I'll just unbolt one of these and I'll show you what they look like. All right, so you can see how I've made the PCBs out of prototype. Um, I've used just normal tactile switches, cost about a cent each, and normal LEDs cost about a cent each. The backlighting is exactly the same as all the backlighting in the cockpit, being that there is three LEDs in um, series with one resistor each, and then all of the circuits in parallel to the same dimming circuit. Um, so each switch will have a ribbon cable coming off it to the control card and that's how the computer gets the signal and then there's basically just a negative and a positive that goes around the whole panel for the backlighting circuit pretty simple it's nothing fancy but it does the job and you can see how it screws into that and that's what pushes the buttons like that you can see that in the back of this i've machined sort of a Oh, sorry, I've lasered, laser engraved the gap in there. So when this all goes together, there's a gap down the side, which is where the ribbon cable comes out, and it keeps it nice and flush against the screen. All right, so here's a quick look at just the backlight circuit I've now completed. You can see it's a pretty simple circuit, just a big circle, really. Uh, and then 12 volt goes in, and she lights up. And you can see from the front, I think it looks pretty good. Uh, so this is 12 volts straight in, so it's full brightness. It's very rare that the cockpit's running on full brightness. But you can see the way that I've made that sort of sandwich. The buttons have a nice sort of positive click to them. And there's little to no shake in the buttons. You can't hear them vibrating. It's just those switches are pushing flush to them. You do get a little bit of flex on that top one there, just because that PCB will flex when you push it. Uh, that's solved by when I put the rear plate on uh, I've just got some foam uh, adhesive foam on the inside of that so once that gets screwed on it gives it a nice solid and it, it makes it nice and solid and you won't get that flex anyway so that's it basically done all I've got to do now is wire up each switch attach it to the Leo Bodner bolt the whole thing together and put it in the cockpit okay so this is basically the completed MFD you can see that it is solid as one unit Nice flat back where it goes flush up against the monitor uh, and a network of spaghetti coming out of it. That one there is for the backlight, goes to the backlight circuit. Uh, all of the rest of these go to a Leo Bodner BBI64 which is mounted behind the monitor. So you, won't, you don't see any of it but it goes around behind the monitor and both the left and the right ones go into that single BBI64. So both of them show up in Windows as a single joystick and then you just program each individual buttons so one of the drawbacks of my design is obviously it's all layers of plastic so you get this terrible looking outside now i could sand that fill it and paint it um, to make it look sort of perfect but i'd lose the ability to pull it apart if i need to make do any maintenance on it it doesn't matter on the outsides because it's basically recessed into the cockpit you can't see any of that the only thing that's an issue is on the inside here because you'll have the monitor here which is glowing light it's very just it's very obvious especially because from where you're sitting there at an angle you, you'll see the inside of that so my initial plan was to cut more acrylic glue it in there paint it black but then i realized i've got a 3d printer now so what i did was anybody who's got a 3d printer would have seen one of these before it's a calibration square um, you can see how smooth it is so basically all i did was redo one of these but the same dimensions as the inner of the mfd so it's only what is it uh 2.2 .2 of a millimeter thick and it fits in here perfectly uh just with a little bit of messing around so i'll just keep that in there with double-sided tape once i get it in nice and straight so it's removable if i need to pull it apart and you can see how nice and smooth it will be on the inside now the next thing i need to do is i'm just going to extend these white dots and i'll do that just with white tape i've cut some white electrical tape to the same thickness of them lines and i'll just run them on the inside so it goes up flush against the monitor uh, then all i need to do is 3d print a knob and both mfds are complete Okay, so there's the finished product. You can see that the um, 3D printed edges in there and I've added the white tape to 
follow the lines along. I've also 3D printed a knob. Okay, so here I am just half putting in the MFDs now. You can see that um, the left one's in and bolted in in its final position. Uh, and you can see what I'm working with. Obviously my main instrument panel is a single large screen. So that's the sort of area that I've got. So I've made all the cables come out of each opposite side so they fit in that gap. And the mounting points are all in the wood and not onto the screen. Uh, these ones get bolted in with furniture taps that go in the wood. This one here is a bit more dangerous because I can't, I can't go through the whole wood because I'll impede on the screen. So I've got to use a really short bolt and just go under the wood on that one. But it does the job. And down the side here, there is no bolt connecting there. It's just press fit up against that little lip. It does the job. You can see that um, the actual MFD itself doesn't move at all once it's bolted in there firmly. Okay, so here is the MFDs in the cockpit and all working. You can see that the dimming circuit is off the same dimmer that the whole cockpit works off, so I can dim that and it dims all the um, console lighting. And now the MFDs dim off that as well, whereas when they were the Thrustmaster ones, they were just always set by USB power. Um, so I can dim them or turn them off. The benefit of that is um, once I get that relay in there, when I get hit by fire or I have an engine fault and I lose electrical power, everything will go dark. So here we are sitting in the aircraft. I just wanted to show that the MFDs work perfectly now in the, in the game. Everything works. You get a nice positive click on the buttons. You can see that all of them, I've made it so those lines basically line up perfectly with what you need. Day night off works, night mode and off, night mode and day mode. Um, all these buttons work now because I've got the extra buttons. I've got the symbols and the um, yeah, it's all good. And on the other side here, they all work as well. I love it.